Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sofia Palace Judge Mohammed Mirza Mohammed Aman, who took the legal oath before His Majesty the King following the issuance of a royal order to appoint him at the Constitutional Court. His Majesty the King also received a member of the Constitutional Court, Judge Ali Abdullah Al Dawashan. His Majesty praised the important role of the Constitutional Court and its different bodies and hailed its efforts in consolidating the law and the Constitution. His Majesty the King wished both judges success in performing their duties. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain is keen in developing its bodies and institutions, enhance the judicial system and consolidation of the rule of law. His Majesty the King added that the development march will continue across all sectors in order to achieve further progress and prosperity for Bahrain and its people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the UAE Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan Al Nayyan, at Qadabiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of the long standing Bahrain UAE relations, noting the progress achieved in bilateral cooperation with the unwavering support of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, and the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Zayan. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, emphasised the importance of furthering joint cooperation and coordination to achieve common goals. For his part, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness and noted His Royal Highness's commitment to strengthening bilateral relations. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Charity Educational Charitable Trust, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the president of the French club at Paris FC, Pierre Faraci, who represents victorious Bahrain, and deputy executive director Fabrice Harout, and former Brazilian player Ray Souza. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed appreciation for the outstanding efforts made by the President and the members of the Board of Directors of the French club at Paris FC, aimed at affirming the club's position in French football and creating the ideal atmosphere for football teams to fulfil the club's vision by achieving positive results. His Highness stated that victorious Bahrain slogan in the club promotes Bahrain and highlights its achievements in various sports events, in addition to achieving the Kingdom's economic vision for 2030 which emphasises the participation in sports and other events to raise the status of the Kingdom. His Highness noted that Bahrain achieved many records in the past period thanks to the presence of Bahraini investment in the European market in the sports field. He added that Paris FC is moving steadily towards further development and prosperity, praising the results of the team in the past period. His Highness wished success to the club in the upcoming period. His Highness received a souvenir which is a club shirt with the name and number of His Highness 13. For his part, the president of the club, Pierre Faraci, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness for his continuous support to the club, as His Highness's support contributed to achieving many goals set by the board of directors, noting that the administration is keen to continue giving and providing the appropriate environment for the club's sports teams. The Representatives' Council held its weekly session, presided over by its Speaker, Ahmed al Musalam. The session approved Decree Bylaw 42 of 2022, amending uh, Mayor Decree 2 of 1975, on the establishment of the Higher Council for Youth and Sports. The Council approved the draft response to the Royal Speech and to assign the Council's office to make the necessary amendments and to submit the response to His Majesty the King. Based on the request of a number of members, the session approved presenting a general topic for public discussion to clarify the government's policy regarding the increase in price, plans to maintain them, and the steps taken by the government to control inflation and the rise of prices of some basic commodities. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, 
the President of the Supreme Council of Health, the SC8, Lieutenant General uh, Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the expansion of the Accidents and Emergency Department and expansion of operating rooms in the Salmania Medical Complex in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr. Jilila Hassan. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Government Hospitals, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa, the CEO of Government Hospitals, Dr. Ahmed Mohammed Al Ansari, and a number of officials. The SCH President praised the directives of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and expressed appreciation to all those in charge of the project, which reflects the interest of the Kingdom and its government in developing services in the health sector and enhances its capabilities that dedicate its role in achieving the goals of the Comprehensive Development March, led by His Majesty the King. He expressed pride in the inauguration of this pioneering project which contributes to the development of health services in the Salmania Medical Complex. The Minister of Health affirmed that the inauguration of the project is an important and qualitative addition to the government's initiatives, noting the efforts of the distinguished medical cadres in various medical specialties and their tireless work with the aim of developing health policies and strategies in an effort to enhance the health of the individual and society, ensuring the provision of comprehensive and advanced health services of high quality, integrated and sustainable. Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Government Hospitals stressed that the success achieved by various service and development projects comes in implementation of the government's directives to pay attention to the Bahraini citizen as he is the focus and the goal of development. The CEO of Government Hospitals asserted that the inauguration of this project represents a quantum leap in the service of citizens and residents in the Kingdom as the expansion includes raising the capacity of beds from 80 to 120 beds an expansion includes seven consultative rooms, 15 recovery rooms, five classification rooms and three treatment rooms. And it includes a separate unit for children and a waiting area for up to 120 people. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, inaugurated the 14th Professional Development Conference and Exhibition, held by the American Society of Safety Professionals in partnership with the Ministry. Also present were Aramco Executive Vice President Nabil Jama, Chief of Public Security Lieutenant General Tarek Al Hassan, Interior Ministry Under Secretary for Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs, the NPRA, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa. Chief Executive of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohammed Al Khaid, President of Customs, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and Capital Governor, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa. The Minister stressed the importance of training and capacity building as primary elements for the development and modernization strategy of the Interior Ministry, through the implementation of the latest scientific curriculums and best training standards to meet security requirements and enhance competency in dealing with security challenges. He also highlighted the importance of enhancing security and general safety awareness. The Minister said that the event reflects the ever-increasing interest in general safety related to saving lives, resources and public and private properties. General Sheikh Rashid added that the gathering of safety experts, professionals and concerned bodies is an opportunity to benefit from the latest technologies and exchange expertise in the field. For his part, Al Jama said that the participants are brought together by shared goals and aspirations and work to protect assets and ecosystems. He said that the mission of safety professionals goes beyond sustaining excellence to pursue continual improvements by raising standards instead of sustaining them. He called to consider the digital and cyber realm and identify potential risks across a much broader spectrum. 
The minister honoured the event's organisers, noting that Bahrain works to encourage such events for being a key element in all development programmes and projects. The minister toured the exhibition featuring 70 companies, sponsors and exhibitors from Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. He was briefed on the latest safety, health and environmental technologies and hailed the importance of the exhibited items to promote the use of available safety tools. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr Mohammed bin Dana, inaugurated the Middle East Energy and Sustainability Forum with the participation of a number of dignitaries, CEOs and specialists. The Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the European Oil Consulting Company for choosing Bahrain to hold specialised events in the oil sector, stressing the Kingdom's good reputation in holding various oil events. He added that the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, is keen on providing means of support and the necessary capabilities to attract such types of events, to enhance cooperation with various agencies, to achieve the goals of sustainable development of clean energy. Mandana noted that the agenda of the forum meets the global needs and is considered a good opportunity for officials to work together to find appropriate and available solutions for the various challenges. The Minister added that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, has adopted many initiatives to achieve the interim and short-term goals to reduce carbon emissions by 30% by 2035. Uh, we take part of this conference today due to the importance of the subject. Everyone is talking about sustainability, alternative fuel and uh, being the future of the region and the future of the world. And I think hosting such an event in Bahrain and in the Gulf region support the idea that this region will be the host of green hydrogen, blue hydrogen, solar energy and all alternative options. So as it has been the hub for oil and gas export in the last years, I think the future will bring more green fuel from this part of the world. The, uh, the conference is very important. Um, it's good to be here and attend and learn about the new technologies available. Uh, energy reduction, emission control, carbon capture, all that's highly relevant to reducing or reaching our goals of net zero. Higher Education Council, the HEC Secretary General and Vice Chairperson of its Board of Trustees, Dr. Sheikh Arana bint Isa bin Duaj Al Khalifa, affirmed the well established education system in Bahrain, supported by His Majesty the King, with the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to further develop education quality meet the Kingdom's Sustainable Development Goals and Economic Vision at 2030. The Secretary-General marked the International Day of Education, approved by the United Nations on January the 24th, celebrating the role of education for peace and development under the theme to invest in people, prioritise education. She affirmed HEC's keenness to improve the higher education sector in the Kingdom.